what's up guys? I don't know why I always say what's up. Going up to Victoria Peak here in Hong Kong and it is a walk. It's pretty hot out, as you can see. This is a cool hike. I recommend hiking instead of taking the tram if you want to stay active. Look at this place. Victoria's Peak sits off Hong Kong Island and is the highest accessible point. I recommend hiking to the top. There's so much to see on the way. And it only takes about an hour, depending on where you start. I even managed to run into a zoo that was completely free on my way up. The zoo was super cool, and they had all kinds of different animals running around. But a few of these animals lacked a bit of decency. And I should have known it wasn't over yet. might want to watch out for that. So after escaping the zoo, it was time to keep on hiking. But before we get to the peak, here's a bit of advice. Uh, this is why you don't go off the beaten path. Scraped up. I think I was on a path I wasn't supposed to be on. Gonna get my knee rest, and yeah, we're gonna continue up. This ain't gonna stop me. But I think I will take the tram down. And then go get some food. So basically, if you don't stare at the lemurs, avoid the orangutans, and stay on the right path, your hike will go just fine, and you'll finally make it to the peak. So we finally made it on top, or made it to Victoria's Peak. Pretty cool view. Uh, the hike wasn't very bad at all, honestly. Stay on the right path and you won't hurt yourself like I did, because I'm an idiot, but yeah, it's definitely worth it. Like, the view was pretty incredible. Even with the fog, it kind of added a uniqueness to the scenery. Though the top is quite commercial, which is not really my style. I stuck around for a bit to watch the sunset through the fog, and afterwards, I caught the tram back down, which only took about five minutes instead of an hour. So after that, I headed north to Sha Tin, which is a part of Hong Kong, and where the 10,000 Buddha's temple is located. It was a quick train ride across the harbor, and once you arrive, there's a few markets you can visit. So after grabbing a few snacks, I made my way to what I assumed was the 10,000 Buddha's temple. There were plenty of Buddhas, so I assumed I was in the right place. The more I began to explore this place, the more I started to get the sneaking suspicion that this was not the 10,000 Buddhist temple, but rather a place where people were honoring their dead. So where might the temple be? Way up there. I took a wrong turn somewhere, but I'm kind of glad I did. What's up guys? Back on selfie mode, but we are here at the 10,000 Buddhas temple entrance. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of Buddhas on the way up. So, I um, want to make a quick note that the entrance to this place is not easy to find. So, uh, I'll shoot some video of the entrance so you don't get caught up and go the wrong way like I did. See you at the top. Now that I was on the right path, I made my way to the temple, and on your way up, you will see some interesting and blatantly comical Buddhas. If Smiley was a Buddha. It was fun picking out interesting Buddhas to look at. But after a short walk, I made it to the top. So we made it to the top, and it's pretty cool. But, um, the climb wasn't bad at all. I thought it was going to be a lot longer. Every Buddha statue on the way up is super unique, and there's a couple, a couple really clever and funny ones to check out, but this place is definitely worth coming up. Uh, it's free, and uh, you need to see it. You definitely need to see it. 
I stayed there until they closed. I spent the rest of the time just having a look around and sitting inside the worship area. And the last thing I want to highlight is visiting the Tian Tan Buddha, or better known as the Big Buddha. To get there, you'll have to take the train back towards the airport west to Tung Chung Station. Once you arrive, just getting to the Big Buddha is part of the attraction itself. You'll get to ride the cable cars the whole 25 minutes up the mountain. Now there are trails you can hike up, but I didn't notice these until after I was on the cable car. And I'm pretty sure this hike would take you all day. The ride up was breathtaking. And before I knew it, this immense fog started to roll in. And once we were inside, you could barely see 10 feet in front of you. The fog was inescapable. And before I knew it, we had arrived. on your walk to the Big Buddha, there's plenty to see. And you'll even happen upon a monastery. If you've made it this far, then you have to see Poland Monastery. It is incredible. But you're probably wondering, where is the big Buddha? Well, once you make it up quite a bit of stairs, he'll be sitting right in front of you, in the clouds. All right, so we are here. We met on the plane coming to Hong Kong. Now we're here at the giant Buddha, but uh, we can't really see him because, you know, it's cloudy. But for now, he's just gonna remain the Buddha in the sky to us. Now I know some of you might be thinking, you can't see everything clearly, there's too much fog. But for me, I had no problem with the fog. It sets such a unique and otherworldly atmosphere. I have never seen anything like it. This fog is not an everyday occurrence. And if you think this is something that would bother you, just simply check the weather before you go. But for me, it was an extremely unique experience. So instead of riding the cable cars back down, I took bus number 21 so I could stop in Tai O Fishing Village. Some of the seafood here, I had personally never seen before. But it's worth having a look around. And after you've had a look around, you can take a boat ride through the village. The boat ride itself only cost about 250 US. You'll cruise by plenty of restaurants where you can eat freshly caught seafood. And towards the end, you'll cruise out into open waters where fishermen and women catch everything. And if you get luckier than I did, you can actually see the rare Chinese pink dolphins that swim in this area. These dolphins are actually endangered. So after about 20 minutes, you're dropped back off in the village. What's up guys? I really hope you enjoyed that video. I just want to say that there are other ways to get into Tai O Village other than just going up to the Big Buddha, so don't think you have to do that. I'm sorry this video ran quite long, but it was hard for me to squeeze everything that I had done in Hong Kong in one video and make it work well. Bear with me on that. 
Something I didn't get to put in this video is Hong Kong Park in the Botanical Gardens. They're absolutely amazing, absolutely free, and you should definitely check those out if you go visit Hong Kong. If you need tips on getting around Hong Kong, where to stay, things like that, I did another video about Hong Kong, which is linked here. I definitely recommend checking out Hong Kong. It can be a bit pricey, especially for lodging, but there's so much to do. A lot of it's free, and it's such an incredible city. I loved it. Also, it is a lot cheaper to fly into and out of than every other city I visit on this trip. It's probably about three times cheaper than Sydney, Australia. So after this, I head off to Sydney using a Tiger Airways flight that cost me about $270. If you want to see more videos about this trip, here are a few links above. After Australia, I head over to the Philippines. If this video helped you at all, make sure you hit that thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, and leave me your feedback in the comments below. If you decided to go traveling because of these videos, throw the hashtag First Step Travelers in your social media so I can check it out. Safe travels, everybody. We'll see you next time.